Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are here with Timeless Closets and Company. Yeah, we have some friends here today to talk to us besides the owner of Wendy Scott, who we love and adore, who has been helping so many, uh, especially throughout the tri-state area with her amazing closets, with her lighting, with her stories about owning almost 200 shoes. She does a lot. Wendy, tell us a little bit about Timeless Closets and yourself, and then I would love for you to introduce your guest, uh, Diane, today. You got it. I'm at 170 in shoes for the record. Um, Timeless Cousins and Cabinetry, you can get me uh, as Timeless Cousins and Cabinetry on all social media platforms. And my number is 908-975-9381. And while we've been doing a podcast all about closets, we've been once a month doing a tongue in cheek where we take skeletons in the closet and we talk about something, uh, a subject that is extremely important and not talked about enough. And that's where we bring in Diane. So Diane, can you tell us who you are and a little bit about what's going on? Sure. So thank you so much. Um, so I, I have to say, first of all, changing your closet is one of the most amazing things that you can do. My husband and I just went through renovation. We didn't know about you, um, but our contractor showed us some really great things that we could do. And organized closet makes your life better. So th I can't say that enough. Our right? mental health and as someone who se sells carpet and flooring for a living, um, one of my favorite things to do is when um, people come in and they're redoing a closet and they want to put something funky, like a leopard skin or something really cool in their closet, right? How Jersey girl of me to want leopard in a closet. So I've yeah, seen it. you're so, so correct. Yeah. So I actually was really excited today um, for this podcast because we do have so much in common. So my story is unfortunate and um, sad. Um, but I believe in what you do matters. So um, I own a company called The Carpet Girl. We sell and install custom carpets and flooring and all of that. And in 2017, when I was about to franchise my company, um, the unimaginable happened. So my daughter, Mallory, was a normal, typical, everyday sixth grader. She was a gymnast. She loved making crafts. She loved taking old shirts and turning them into pillows. And she was just learning to sew. She had taken a few sewing classes. She was really very philanthropic. And she used to make these bracelets and she would sell them um, at our campground and um, sit, give the money to Camp Good Days. I knew that Mallory was struggling at school to make friends. Um, she is the youngest of my four children. And I, as a seasoned mom, um, you know when your kids are struggling, right? You know when things are just not. But like every other mom, you say, oh, this too shall pass. Or, you know, eventually you'll find your tribe, right? Like, don't worry about those girls. Um, those girls aren't your friends. Um, ignore them, right? Like we say things like that. Um My daughter was bullied at school and online. And on June 14th, 2017, um, my daughter took her own life. Um, it is statistically scary that our children, first of all, at the age of 12, know how to end their life. I, I If you had asked me seven years ago that my daughter would know how to hurt herself, it, it just, no. She wouldn't even know how to do that. Um, and would she do it? Why she did it? All of those questions obviously still linger. So because we weren't talking about teen and tween suicide in 2017, even though the CDC had released in January early that year, that teen and tween suicide was on the rise and it was um, staggering the statistics. We weren't really talking about it. And so after I got past the minutes of embarrassment after what Mallory had done, um, I don't know why, but there was just this fire that was lit inside of me that parents need to know if this can happen to our family, it can happen to anyone. Um, and so we started a mission called Mallory's Army. Um, it is a 501c3 uh, foundation. Um, it's 
we we do school presentations, we do community events, we do fundraising, um, and we just do our absolute best to really try to warn parents the dangers, not just of bullying, but the social media is not social. And we we really need to think about the dangers that we're putting in our children's hands um, and need to understand, I call it the three S's, right? In kindergarten, kids learn that Santa Claus isn't real. In third grade, they learn about sex. And unfortunately, in fifth grade, they learn about suicide. And I think it's really important, you know, September is Suicide Prevention Month. And I think it's really important that adults are leading these conversations and not kids on the playground. I commend you on being here by by doing what you've done with Mallory's Army and, of course, sharing your personal story. And my condolences to you, your family. But I love how you're taking something so tragic and making it so powerful and to help others. So, by the way, uh, Diane, how can we find Mallory's Army? What is the, the website? Is there a p- page for us that we can go yeah, to? Yeah, so we have a website. It's called Mallory'sArmy.org, M-A-L-L-O-R-Y-S-A-R-M-Y.org. Mallory's Army. Um, we also have, we share a lot of content on our Facebook page, which again is Mallory's Army. Um, so um, you can follow us on my Instagram, which is the carpet girl. But um, yeah, like we we try to share information for parents um, through our website and through and to provide resources. And I'm sure you've helped so many at this point. Could you share a story or two? I'm sure you've spoken to people who have been impacted by Mallory's Army, whether it's parents or children. Do you want to share some of those? Sure. I, I, you know, it's funny. I have one of my favorite stories was a story that happened shortly after Mallory passed away. And it was a, a woman that reached out. And I think we all know when our children are struggling and when they don't fit in or, you know, something is wrong. And so this very um, open woman reached out to me and she said, I just want you to know because of you, she said, I had a very uncomfortable conversation with my son. She's like, I knew he was struggling. I knew he wasn't fitting in. She's like, he was overweight. He had bad skin. And she's like, and I really didn't understand how to help him. She's like, but because of the information that you shared, she's like, I had the really hard conversation with him and she's like, I went into his bedroom and I said, have you thought of hurting yourself? And we're as parents, we're really afraid of to ask that because we think that that will give them the idea. And I can tell you that that's just it's been debunked. Right. It's just not true. And she said that she went in and asked her son, had you ever thought of hurting yourself? And he reached in his nightstand drawer and he pulled out a notebook. And in that notebook was letters of goodbye. And she said they cried for a really long time and she took responsibility for not providing him with the support that he needed and not realizing. She said in that moment, they went to the pantry and they threw out all of the junk food, like all of it. And she said it was really healing to throw out the garbage. She's like just to get it out of their house. She said she hired a nutritionist. She said she hired a college student to take him shopping so that he could buy cool clothes. Mm -hmm. And she said that entire summer, um, he walked every day and just ate healthy. And she said, I just want you to know that my son has never been healthier and happier than he is. Um, and I, it was, it's such a powerful story. I got goosebumps really, from this one. Yeah. 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 It was one of those moments that you go, ah, that's what it is. And so instead of looking at the world and trying to change laws and hold people accountable for mistreating her son, she really had an, a moment of self-reflection and said, I'm not going to change how people at school treat him, but I'm certainly going to empower him to take care of himself. And um, every once in a while, I get an email from her letting me know how how he's doing and how great. And she said his wow. life has never been better. And so, you know, if I um, if I don't do much more in this life, um, I know that his life is better because of us. And so that's a that's a pretty great moment. Wow. Impactful. So Mallory's Army is both educational about um, bullying as well as suicide prevention? 
We do our best. I mean, here's the thing. Like, yeah, like there's so many different aspects of it. So we try not to be suicide prevention just because we're not educated in that, right? Like if someone reaches out to me and they're having suicidal thoughts and ideations and anything like that, I'm, I'm really not trained and I don't have any, any letters behind my name to help with that. Um, so and I want to be more than awareness, right? I think we're all right. aware that there's a problem, whether it's the abuse of social media, whether it's kids raising the bar on hate, whether it's yeah. disconnected parents, we are all aware that there are problems. So we want to be more than awareness. Um And but the solutions are very personal. And I think the story says that, right? Like the solutions, sometimes you have to look inward. You have to take responsibility. Maybe your child is not mature enough to navigate the social sites. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, maybe you need to remove that, right? Like maybe soccer practice isn't social for your child. Maybe it's just soccer practice and maybe you need to invest in more social opportunities for your child so that they can build resilient behavior. So it's more than just awareness. But again, Mallory's Army, we can't fix everybody's problems. This is something we have to do ourselves. You find that there was more conversation after your foundation was was created and everything? Absolutely. And I I will. It's more sharing. Yeah, I will take credit for that. I Like I said, in 2017, we were not talking about teen and tween suicide. And and my husband and I are always very um, curious why Mallory made national news, right? Like we were on the Today Show. We were on Megyn Kelly. We were on News Nation, right? Like we were always curious as to why Mallory's story. I mean, News 12 covered Mallory for probably years because we were. um, And sometimes other children who self-harm don't really get the coverage. So I was always curious as to why that is. Um, But I think it's mostly because she was the first one we really started talking about, right? Like we just weren't identifying that children were self-harming as a result of how they were being treated at school and the link between social media yeah. and self-harm. So I think that was kind of the the first time that there was oh. a national story. I mean, I, I can't, I mean, the social media thing, I have a seven and nine-year-old, two little boys who are starting in that, but my teenage nieces and nephews and how that really affects them thinking that everyone's life is so perfect and what they look like and everything is about now looking, you know, using this makeup, using that makeup. And it's just, it's like brainwashing them. It's really sick, it's sad. It is. And it it is directly linked to influencers and their experience and how much time they're spending online. Right. Like I I, want to say when like the Internet came out and I'm I'm really dating myself, but there was a life before the Internet. Right. Um, And um, but I remember when AOL and chat rooms first came out and it was never let the computer be in your child's room, right? There was this movement of not putting the computer in your child's room, that there were um, safety measures that needed to be put in place in these chat rooms. And John Halligan's son um, was a victim of that exact movement. And if you look at John Halligan's son, Ryan, and Ryan's story, and you compare it to Mallory, you know, 15, 17 years apart, their stories are almost identical. So we didn't get better. We got worse. We took the computers out of their bedrooms and we put it in their hands. And I I think that in some circumstances, right, the internet and the social sites and all of that, they do make us better, right? They they connected us in this. You you may not have heard about Mallory had we not had some element but I think we are putting way too much weight in um, our children being spending so much time online. They're not it's not social media. If anything, yeah. it's antisocial. Right. It's isolation media is what they really should be calling it. But that's not that doesn't sell. Right. We call it social. They don't kids don't hang out at the mall anymore. They hang out in these chat rooms. Yeah. And the problem with that is, is that they don't build resilient behavior because of it. Right. The way that we build common ground is through moments just like this. Uh, You know, I like ice cream. You like ice cream. I like dogs. You like dogs. And before you know it, we have this thing in common and we can get past our differences because we have built this common ground. And you do that through socialization, through conversation, through playground play. We have removed recess 
from many of our school programs. Like, how sad is that? Is that kids, and if they do have recess, it's so structured that what happens is, is kids just automatically only gravitate rather than yep. they only gravitate to their close knit. So again, that's isolating them even further. So it's a it's a bigger problem than just social media and just bullying. We truly have a a social interaction problem that's impacting our children and how they grow up. Oh, my goodness. And and by the way, can I ask how the two of you connected? I've been following Diane's and Mallory's story since day one. We're in uh, you're in Hunterdon County, right? Uh, Morris County. Morris County. Yeah, Rockaway County, Township. Morris County. We, we're right next to each other. So all the schools, we kind of all follow each other. So from day one, I've been following um, my my son. He's 26. So this is way, way long ago. But in junior high, he was, you know, he's a black and white kid where you can't say it's OK if this happens. It's either this or that. And mm -hmm. there was a hallway in school that he wasn't allowed to go down mm -hmm. unless there was no one in that hallway. So what does my son do? He goes down the hallway. I'm this group of girls started picking on him, which is weird. You know, it's a boy, boy and the yeah. girls are calling him names using really derogatory swear words. Listen, Traffic, middle but, school girls, you want to solve, you want to solve world peace, send in a pack of middle school girls. Oh I'm not gosh. kidding. You uh, want to solve the problems in the world? Middle school girls can be extremely cruel, not even vicious. mean, but cruel. Yes. But the schools take, my son is the one that got in trouble. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened to those girls, not even a slap on their wrist. They grabbed him by the hoodie and yanked it and choked him. Mm -hmm. And they constantly swore. And and I, I want to know, is there is there more of an awareness towards the bullying side now in the schools? I mean, the culture of schools has to change in order for us to um in order for us to evolve. However, and I tell this to every parents and they, they struggle with understanding this, it's not against the law to be an yep. asshole. I'm going to say it again. Mm -hmm. It is not against any law to be an asshole. And that doesn't matter whether you're an adult or whether you're a child, particularly with children, right? You have to remember, we're not throwing children in juvie because they gave someone the middle finger or they pulled on someone's hoodie. So one of the problems that we have here is that this common courtesy of, so there is not discipline. When children can predict the consequences of their behavior, you will see change. I'll say it again. When children can predict the consequences of their behavior. The problem with it is, is that it's a free for all at school, right? Some kids get in trouble for things. Some kids don't. Uh. So it's not predictable, right? I know that if I am speeding in a school zone, I'm going to get pulled over and I'm going to get a yep. ticket. So what do I do when I see a police officer? I immediately hit my brakes because I don't want the ticket because I can predict the consequences of my behavior. Children cannot. There is a lawless yeah vibe in the school systems and children know if you ask kids who the bullies are and who the victims are they will tell you hurt people hurt the kids know what's going on in the hallways they are the presidents they are the ceos they are the executives yep. of the hallways what goes on and how kids are treated is ex a direct result of the children who are running the hallways and so if we don't put systems in place that hold children Account. in consequences and accountable for that, then we're not going to see the bullying change or the behavior change. And it certainly won't change in school and it certainly won't change in online. So, you know, I tell parents all the time, well, my kid's not a bully and they, they, they made a mistake and they did this. Listen, let your kids get in trouble at 14 because you know the difference between getting in trouble at 14 and getting trouble at 18? A felony. I would much rather my kid have in-school suspension, detention, or have to pick up trash yep. on the side of the road at 14 rather than having to bail them out of a situation when they are 18, 19. Absolutely. The difference between bullying yep. at 14 and bullying ten, at 19 is called hazing and it's a felony. You better get your kid's house in order before they go off to these schools and apply to all of these sororities and fraternities yeah. and all that. Because again, it's a it's a gateway into that type of behavior. And if they get away with it at 14, they think they're going to get away with it at, at 18 or 19. And let them get in trouble. Yep. 
Mm Let them get -hmm. kicked off the soccer, soccer team. Let them be suspended from playing football for the rest of the year, because that's an incredible, valuable lesson to learn as a child. And they won't do that again as an adult. I know. It's so impacting that you're like, it is. Wow. <laughs> and and I'm gonna just say if if the school doesn't do it, you need to do it as a parent. If right. the school doesn't pull them out, you pull them out. Right. I don't, I don't understand this as strong this, as they should be. Yeah, I don't understand this philosophy of my kid would never do that. I literally had a parent one time say to me that um there was no way that her daughter wrote the things that the school said that she wrote on you know Snapchat or whatever. Someone must have hacked her account. There's no oh way that gosh. she would have done that. And I just without laughing in her face, I laughed in her face and I was like, that's the problem. Yeah. There's a very good chance your daughter did write that. And instead of defending the behavior, let's parent the behavior. Let's yeah. let them see the consequences of what that feels like and understand. Because again, I would much rather them get in trouble at 14 than get in trouble at 19. Absolutely. Well, thank you for, um, you know, <laughs> putting us on this track to start thinking. And I hope parents are listening. People are listening because you're right. It's about accountability and it could be your child being that bully. Yeah. I, I'm the same way. I'm always uh, for, had a situation just a few weeks ago on the football field. And what happened was I brought my, my neighbor's kids with my kids. My son's only nine. He was practicing football and the older kids I brought with me, my neighbors, my, my good friends, they're 16 and 14, a uh, little boy. Well, big boy. And one of the parents comes over to me and says, you know, your son was saying, um, trying to lure my daughter who's, you know, seven saying that she, he's going to get her candy from the ice cream truck. And I'm like, what? It was my neighbor's friend, but still uh, my neighbor. I said, what? I said, she's like, yeah, she's scared. He scared my daughter. I grabbed the, my, my neighbor's name's Ryan. And I'm like, what did you say? He's like, oh, I was just joking. I said, that's not right. That is horrible. You scared the little girl. I said, so holding him accountable, I'm not even his mother, but like if it was my kid, which it could have been, it's just like, you got to be that person and you got to, you know, take the blame because it, it was his fault. But some parents are in such denial. My kid would never say that, would never do that. No, you, you never know. So you got to confront it head on. I agree with that. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, uh, thank you for doing what you're doing with Mallory's Army. Would you mind, Diane, telling us again how we can contact you? So Mallory's Army, mallorysarmy.org um, is our website. Info at mallorysarmy.org is our direct email. So if there's a parent that has some questions about what's going on, um, you know, if you if, if you want to live in a great community, it starts with you. You've got to be a great community. People get so caught up with the presidential elections and all of this. And I'm going to tell you something. It, the best impact that you can make in your community is mm -hmm. localized, right? Know who the board of ed members are, right? It's this time, it's election season. You should know who's running for board of ed. You should know what, what they believe in, what policies they're passing. Participate in your yep. board of ed meetings. Know what's going on in your community. These are the things that truly will make a difference. You know, it's called PTA sure. or PTO for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's Parents and Teachers Association. You've got to collaborate. And it's not about making sure that the teachers are appreciated on teacher appreciation. It's really about understanding yep. what's going on within the school system, what's going on with the culture of that. Who are the anti-bullying specialists? Who's the HIV coordinator? You need to know who these people are and have a mindset of being proactive versus being reactive. If you wait until there's a problem, it's more than likely right. too late. Thank you again. Uh, tell us the website, both of you, how we can reach you. Thank you. Yeah. Mallory's Army.org. Yeah. Mallory's Army.org. Um, Diane, thank you so much. Jill and I both got shirts. They just didn't get in, get here in time. So your blue <laughs> ribbon will be walking around eventually <laughs> in New York with Jill and, and in Hunterdon County with me. You can get me at Timeless thank Closets you. and Cabinetry, Wendy at TimelessCC.com, 908-975-975. 9381. And all of Jill, of Diane's information for Mallory's Army can also be found on my website under the podcast. Yep. And she also has a QR code where you can go direct for donations um, for Mallory's Army as well. Beautiful. And I know you did mention uh, Mallory's Army last time. I wasn't aware that Diane was the mom until I, you, when, I when you introduced her, it, it took a little bit. You told me about, you know, last I week did. she promoted her uh, on the show and to read her child's story. So it, I, 
I'm so sorry, but I'm also blessed you're here speaking out about it and doing Thank something you. to help others. Thank, Thank you, you again, ladies, and uh, looking forward to our next time we speak. Bye-bye. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Thank Diane. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.